Do you know the first ever residential house built in Lusaka? Oh, oh, you do? Oh, that's a bummer. Really you wanted to outshine on... Okay, for the people that don't, welcome to the Maripodi house. Francisco Giovanni Battista Maripodi built this house and it becoming the first residential house ever built in Lusaka. But let's bear in mind, before colonialism, Lusaka was inhabited predominantly by the Soli people and there were other parts that were inhabited by the Lenja people. This house is the first residential house but not the first house ever built on the land that we call Lusaka. Soli villages spread out throughout the whole entire province from Kawata, Chilenje, Lilai, Kamwala, Olympia area, Chilanga and the town center. And across the waters at the Berlin Conference of 1885, the British placed the claim for Central Africa, eager to block the Portuguese and Belgians' expansions of the land in the area. And in 1889, the British government granted Cecil Rhodes a charter for his BSA company, which gave him mineral rights and authority to make treaties with African leaders, giving the company administrative powers. Cecil Rhodes, who made his fortune in South Africa's diamond mine by seizing land, murdering, killing, pillaging, and forcing Africans into slave labor, had authority over the territory of what was to be called Northern Rhodesia. Lusaka was seized for the sole purpose of mining and to make way for the railway line from South Africa to Broken Hill, what is present day Kawe. But the BSA company did not find any minerals in the area of Lusaka, so they started to sell the land at a very cheap price to other European settlers. Thus came Giovanni Maripodi an Italian businessman who had a contract on the railway. He also had a brick making business opposite what is now the Independent Stadium. And that's the reason why that area or compound is called Maripodi. He was granted extensive land from the north to the northeast of the town. Even the Dutch Reformed Church in Lusaka was established on one of Maripodi's farms. And in 1908, the Dutch Reformed Church built a school that catered only for the children of the white European settlers. As movement of the Africans was heavily restricted, they could not buy land. They couldn't vote. Integration was banned as segregation was heavily promoted in schools, hospitals and churches. Taxes were imposed on Africans so that they could seek employment on the newly established farms. The native Zambian population were housed in two compounds, Old Kabwata and Old Kamwala. These were more temporary dwelling places for the African natives, as it was assumed that the men would leave their villages to work in the town without their families. Hence the one-roomed houses at Old Kawata, which is now the cultural village. In 1945, houses were built for the Zambian natives in Old Chilenje, followed by New Chilenje in 1950 and Matero in 1951. After Zambia's independence of 1964, we saw the construction of Chilenje South in 1965 to 1968, the construction of Kawata Estates in the 1970s, Avondale and Helen Kaunda in the 1980s. But the question is, is the Maripodi house the precursor in how we build houses today? Because we used to build houses like this, and now we build houses like this. Has the British rule and colonialism contributed to how we build houses and buildings? And if you can tell that a house is either an English, Norwegian, Germanic or Chinese type of architecture just by looking at it in the middle of nowhere anywhere in the world. So with that said, if you saw a building or a house outside this country built by a Zambian, would you tell that it's a Zambian type of building just from its architecture? And the last question is, what is Zambian architecture? So what started off as farmlands and as an agricultural area slowly developed into a commercial center and finally into the capital city of Zambia and this house is said to have been built in 1921 and the old Lusaka boys school which was built for the children of the white farmers and white settlers are now offices of the National Heritage Conservation Commission. Thank you for watching Welcome to My House, the new series on I Travel the World Channel 10,000 BC. If you want to visit the Maripodi House, it's situated along Didan Kimati Road near the intercity bus terminals. The National Heritage Site is now a bar and restaurant, so if you want to have a drink and some good food, visit the Maripodi House. From Welcome to My House, a house full of history, see you next time. Welcome to my house.